Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be providing a false proof of Fermat's last theorem. Now, you may have heard of this theorem before. It's a pretty big theorem in maths. And it went, it took over 350 years to solve. It was proposed by uh, Pierre de Fermat but ages ago. Um, and uh, he thought he had a proof. Uh, but it's quite unlikely that he did because it took over 350 years to prove, beat some of the greatest mathematicians. But it was proved uh, relatively recently in 1994 by Andrew Wiles, uh, a mathematician at Oxford, in fact. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to try and uh, prove, in inverted commas, Fermat's last theorem in a very short video. It's definitely not a proof, and I encourage you to try and spot the mistake. And at the end, I will say what the mistake is. But I guess the aim of this video is to just highlight the importance of being very, very careful in your proofs. Because, um, obviously, then you can claim to approve something that took over 350 years to prove. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling and I'm going to get into today's proof. Okay, so let me firstly state Fermat's last theorem and then I'll get into the proof. Okay, so let n be a natural number bigger than or equal to 3. Then there are no solutions to x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n for x, y, z natural numbers. Okay, so x, y, z are natural numbers and I claim that we uh, x to the n... Sorry, x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n is an equation, and I claim that any solution to this is not going to have each x, y, z in the natural numbers. Okay, and here's my proof for that. And I guess I'll put it in uh, inverted commas. So, suppose uh, there exists an n with this property. In other words, there exists an n for which there are solutions x, y, and z in the natural numbers to x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n. And now what we're going to do is take the smallest n with this property. Okay, so let n be the minimum of, let's say, the m's for which there exists x, y, z in the natural numbers such that x to the m plus y to the m oh, equals z to the m. Okay, so we're taking the sort of smallest value of m for which there are solutions x, y, and z in the natural numbers to x to the m plus y to the m equals z to the m. Okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do is then we have the x, or there exists, because uh, this is a discrete set, a set, the minimum is indeed in this set, or if I called this thing the infimum, it would be in this set. So in other words, there are indeed x, y, and z in the natural numbers such that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n with x, y, and z in the natural numbers. Great. Now what we're going to do is differentiate everything. So on the left-hand side, I get nx to the n minus 1 plus ny to the n minus 1 equals nz to the n minus 1. But now everything, there's like a common factor of n, so I can divide through by n. So I get x to the n minus 1 plus y to the n minus 1 equals z to the n minus 1. Uh, but remember, x, y, and z are natural numbers, and x to the n minus 1 plus y to the n minus 1 equals z to the n minus 1 is something of this form, except with n minus 1 in the exponent. And of course, n is a natural number, so certainly n minus 1 uh, it will be a natural number because n is bigger than or equal to uh, 2. Uh, if, uh, n is bigger than or equal to 3, sorry. Um, so we found another solution, but by definition, n was the smallest integer, a uh, positive integer with this property. Um, but now I've claimed that n minus 1 is also in this set here, which is obviously a contradiction because n minus 1 is less than n, and n was the smallest element in this set by definition. Okay, so that ends the proof for Fermat's last theorem. Now you may be wondering what the mistake was in this proof. Have I just actually proved Fermat's last theorem uh, in just, what, three or four lines? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Um, the reason I haven't, and I guess it was my use of x, y, and z, was quite deceptive. Whenever we, use, whenever we use x, y, and z, we usually think of them as sort of continuous differentiable variables. But here, I've treated them as natural numbers, nice and discrete things. So we can't really differentiate them. Okay, now let me give you an example of uh, that. Okay, so let's look at the... Let's rub all this off. And now let's look at the polynomial equation p of x equals x to the n. Uh, not even x to the n, let's look at x squared. x squared minus 1. Okay, so obviously this has a root uh, 1, so p of 1 equals 0. Okay, but that doesn't imply 
but p prime of 1 equals 0. And that's exactly the thing I assumed held in uh, my proof of Fermat's last theorem. And we can quite clearly see that because p prime of x is just 2x, and therefore p prime of 1 is 2 times 1, which is 2. And of course, that is not 0. OK, so it's sort of this reasoning for why my proof for Fermat's last theorem was invalid. It's the fact that if p of x equals some constant, so p of x evaluated at some point a equals a constant, then if you differentiate both sides, or you can't differentiate both sides, in other words, if p, p of a equals some constant, then that doesn't imply that p prime of a equals zero, obviously, because then otherwise the, diff the derivative of every function would be zero, and thus every function would be constant, which is obviously not true. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video, a little, bit of, a little bit of a different one in which I provide a false proof, but the main aim of this video was to make sure that you know when you're allowed to uh, do certain things in maths and make sure you're very careful in your proofs, because otherwise you can potentially undermine uh, 350 years of hard work from different mathematicians across the globe. Anyway, I will catch you in the next one. If you are new, if you are new here, 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 please do consider subscribing. I make lots of fun different maths videos and stuff like that. Proofs, false proofs, uh, problem solving, that sort of thing. If that interests you, please do consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.